Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose is one of the most notorious divas in all of rock and roll. Though he is without a doubt one of the greatest vocalists of all time, he's also among the most difficult to work with. With all that in mind, let's take a look at some of the rockers who can't stand Axl Rose. The 1992 Guns N' Roses Metallica Stadium Tour has gone down in history as one of the most doomed tours in all of metal. The tour saw tensions between the two bands quickly escalate, with things only getting worse when Metallica lead singer James Hetfield suffered third-degree burns from the band's pyrotechnics in the middle of their set, forcing them to end early when James was rushed to the hospital. Guns N' Roses had the opportunity to save the evening for fans with an incredible set. However, not only did Axl refuse to take the stage for an extended three-hour intermission, he decided to end the show early, citing a sore throat. The enraged crowd rioted, causing $400,000 worth of damage. In a 2021 interview with Kerrang!, Metallica's Kirk Hammett would look back on the ill-fated tour and cite Axl Rose as the root cause of all the tour's issues, saying, That tour was very stressful because there were so many problems. At that point in time, you never really knew if Axl felt like he was going to play the show or not, or if he was going to be on time or not, or if there was going to be an issue with the actual show or not, and that kind of drove everyone crazy. Though Axl Rose was initially a massive fan of Nirvana, lead singer Kurt Cobain famously loathed Guns N' Roses from the very beginning, saying, I don't think there's anything special about that band other than they had tattoos and that seemed rebellious. They're alcoholics. Alcoholism is a substantial part of their band. Really, they're nothing but obnoxious idiots. Further offending the GNR lead singer, Nirvana refused a highly lucrative touring offer with Guns N' Roses and Metallica in 1992, which Axl considered a slap in the face. As animosity between the two bands grew, Axel began tearing into Cobain on stage, saying, Cobain is basically just an effing junkie with a junkie wife. Their feud would erupt into a heated confrontation at the 1992 MTV Video Music Awards, which nearly became a fistfight, with Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl remembering, but didn't take much to blow up into a full-fledged showdown. Kurt and Courtney were screaming at Axel. Axel screamed back. It was all just soap opera BS. Only a few days later, Axel would make a bold statement by burning a Nirvana hat on stage during a Guns N' Roses show in Toronto, Canada. Kurt would ultimately draw a definitive line in the sand, stating during an interview with The Advocate that, quote, Axel Rose is a sexist and a racist and a homophobe, and you can't be on his side and be on our side. Following Cobain's death in 1994, Guns N' Roses would extend an olive branch by offering their condolences to Nirvana's surviving members. Motley Crue frontman Vince Neil and Axl Rose were embroiled in one of the most infamous feuds in rock history. It all began at the 1989 MTV Video Music Awards, where Motley Crue presented Guns N' Roses with the Best Metal Video Award for Sweet Child of Mine. The event suddenly took a violent turn after Neil assaulted GNR rhythm guitarist Izzy Stradlin backstage. Allegedly, Stradlin had hit Neil's pregnant wife at the Cat House Club in Los Angeles a few weeks prior, and Vince was looking for revenge. That's when Axl Rose rushed to the defense of his bandmate, yelling, I'm going to kill you at Vince Neil. Neil's bodyguards were able to quickly defuse the situation and stop any more punches from being throne. However, this confrontation would ultimately launch a media frenzy that would be remembered for years to come. Following the incident, Vince Neil would brag to Kerrang! magazine that he broke Izzy Stradlin's nose. This led to Axl Rose demanding a public apology from Neil for supposedly lying in his interview. If Vince did not cave to his demands, there would be a fight, with Rose being quoted as saying, any way you want to go, guns or knives, mother effer. Vince Neil would later issue a challenge to Rose via a public statement on MTV, saying, Axl, if you're watching this, I want to challenge challenge you to a fight. I'm gonna give you the time, and then give me the place. And there's no backing out now, buddy. It's time to put up or shut up. As the hype around the fight continued to grow, so did the animosity between the two singers. Neil even suggested that the fight be held in an arena and televised to the world. Despite the war of words, a match between the two never came to fruition. In the early 90s, legendary Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash left the band due to creative differences and personal conflicts between him and Rose. According to GNR's former manager, Doug Goldstein, the rift between the two musicians began to form after Slash began collaborating with the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. I told him not to do it, recalls Goldstein, because Axel was essayed by his father when he was two, and he believed the charges against Michael Jackson. When Axel found out Slash was going to play with MJ, he was devastated. He thought Slash would support him and be a against all abuse. From Axel's point of view, that was the only problem. He could ignore the drugs and the alcohol, but never the allegations against Jackson. Slash further stated that Axel's need for absolute control of Guns N' Roses was a point of contention for him, claiming that he and the rest of his bandmates were forced to sign over their stake in the name Guns N' Roses under duress. 
saying, Axl refused to go on stage one night during the Use Your Illusion tour in 1992 unless the band signed away the name rights to the band. Unfortunately, we signed it. I didn't think he'd go on stage otherwise. On December 7th, 2011, it was announced that the classic Guns N' Roses lineup was to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. However, tensions between the former bandmates were still too high for Axl to get past, and Rose released a statement saying he would not be attending the induction. He would further state that standing on stage alongside the core GNR lineup would be a, quote, complicated or awkward situation that was an attempt to distract from the then current lineup of Guns N' Roses. Despite all this, after almost 20 years of not talking to his former bandmate, Slash announced that he had become friends with Axl Rose again in July of 2015. It was later announced that both Slash and bassist Duff McKagan would be rejoining Guns N' Roses for a headline performance at the Coachella Festival. The reunion was later expanded into the Not In This Lifetime tour, and the semi-reunited lineup have been together ever since. Singer John Bon Jovi would enter into a rather one-sided dispute with Axl Rose in 2006. During an interview with the New York Post, John would express disgust and even jealousy at the amount of attention the media gives to Axl Rose. That mother effer hasn't made a record in 13 years and he gets all that attention, said Bon Jovi. Do you know what I've done in 13 years? A lot. But they have continued to write about the freak show aspect of him, because he's a recluse. That makes him interesting, right? Fans familiar with Axl Rose's temperament were preparing for the GNR frontman to unleash a savage verbal tirade against Bon Jovi. However, Rose never acknowledged the remarks, depriving fans of a signature Axl Rose takedown. In the fall of 2006, Eagles of Death Metal had the opportunity of a lifetime opening for Guns N' Roses on their US tour. Unfortunately, they only lasted one show, with Axl referring to them as the quote, pigeons of expletive metal, and then kicking them off the tour the very next day, reportedly due to a poor reception from the GNR audience. EODM frontman Jesse Hughes was shocked by Axl's actions, saying that Rose was out of his effing mind. Hughes further claimed that his tour manager later received a call that night from Rose's management, apologizing for the singer's actions. Our tour manager gets a phone call, remembers Hughes. Axel's thought about it, he's really sorry, and you're more than welcome to finish the tour. I just said, you can tell that mother effort to go and F himself, because I will never go through that again. Twelve years later, Eagles of Death Metal would memorialize the incident by releasing a covers LP titled, The Eagles of Death Metal Present Pigeons of Expletive Metal. Velvet Revolver was a rock supergroup formed from the ashes of Guns N' Roses and fronted by Stone Temple Pilots frontman Scott Wayland. Axl Rose would later usher in a war of words against the group, issuing a statement through his management team that put Slash on blast, claiming that Slash had told him that Wayland was a fraud. In response, Wayland took to Velvet Revolver's official website, calling Rose a quote, fat Botox-faced wig-wearing expletive. Wayland continued that Rose had an unoriginal, uncreative little mind. What we're talking about here is a frightened little man who once thought he was king, wrote Wayland. But unfortunately, this king without his court is nothing but a memory of the a-hole he once was. Ouch. In his 2007 autobiography, Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash would reveal that Axl Rose and the legendary David Bowie came to blows over Bowie's pursuit of Aaron Everly, Rose's then-girlfriend. It all started when Bowie attended the 1989 shoot for GNR's video, It's So Easy, at the Cat House Club. Rose wanted to make a quote, no holds barred, uncensored type of music video, featuring his girlfriend in little to no clothing. Bowie apparently got a bit too friendly with Everly, with Cat House Club owner Ricky Rackman later revealing, I guess what happened is Bowie tried to pick up Axel's girlfriend Erin, and that pissed off Axel. So Axel was running after Bowie, yelling, I'm gonna kill you. Soon after, Bowie would attend a Guns N' Roses show at the Cat House Club. Axel would hurl insults at Bowie from the stage, forcing David to become so uncomfortable that he eventually left the venue. To his credit, Bowie later apologized to Rose for his behavior prior to his death in 2016, and the two were able to make amends before the icon's passing. And that's our list. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Heavy for daily videos about your favorite rock and metal bands. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching Heavy, and we'll see you soon.